Hello everyone and welcome to my studio and my scruffy whiskers. This is some Izumiyama single stone porcelain that I would like to throw on the kick wheel today. And that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be throwing these small forms on the kick wheel. Which is not unlike throwing on an electric wheel except your legs move more. I have two kick wheels, and this is uh, one that I got from my teacher's younger brother when he retired from potting. And this is the one I use for throwing. The other one, which is the one I built uh, myself, I use for doing coil and paddle work. And today's video features the first use ever of the uh, shoulder cam. So you're sort of seeing what I'm seeing, but uh, the drawback is uh, every time my shoulder moves, the camera moves. So um, yeah, we'll be working with this and hopefully refining the technique as, uh, as we go through here um, in the next few videos. This uh, single stone porcelain uh, starts out real soft because I like to throw really soft clay on the kick wheel because it's less work on my legs. Um, it soaks up water like crazy, like a sponge, so I throw with slip, uh, which saves me a lot of trouble down the line, and I'll be throwing today using these cow's tongue ribs. I've got over there, I think there are like seven or eight different types for different types of pots. Um, this is a type that's used for cylindrical forms, and you can see the end of it is sort of squared off. It's not round like some of the other ones. It's good for the defining the interior corners of a cup or a plate. And I turned it this direction. I'm using the round part of it to just create a basic sort of uh, wangata or what, a, what would be normally a bowl shape here to start with. Once that bowl shape is established and I've got it as tall as I want it, I'm going to make sure that lip is stable, thin it out a little bit, and I'm going to roll it over. And here I will use a little bit of water, but in a real controlled way, using a brush there just to apply a little bit of water just to lubricate and then go over that, go over with the edge of that lip there. Um, but not quite as easily as I had hoped. So I'm going to go in and compress that bottom really good and then bring that edge out. And having that bottom compressed and under tension will really keep that pot stable as I work on the top. As you can see, it's already wobbly. The wobbliness is not that big of a deal. Um, this is just that type of a form. It's loosely thrown and uh, it's going to be a little misshapen. It probably looks better that way. Um, if anyone's familiar with these sort of older um, kutsugata or shoe-shaped oribe forms, this is sort of what these are modeled after. So um, a bit of misshapenness is, is desirable, but not so desirable if it looks intentional. So any of that you can get in just throwing and lifting the pot up off the wheel makes it look more natural. Rather than making a perfectly round pot and then when, once you're done with it, going in with your fingers and deforming it. All right, and this next shape will be, this next cup, I believe, will be a more of a standard, just sort of wangata or just a, a, a typical sort of orthodox bowl, round bowl shape. And this will use a slightly different rib, or actually very different rib. It's um, a cow's tongue rib, but it's round-ended and round-curved, and it's used for making small cups and bowls. 
and the occasional very small um, dish. But I wouldn't use it on any dish larger than maybe two or three inches or maybe like, you know, around 10 centimeters in diameter. I'd use a, a larger cow's tongue for that. In fact, this one is actually almost too big for these little tiny forms. It's hard to get that in there without causing problems. But um, I don't have a round-ended cow's tongue uh, that's small and that's quite the right size for these types of little small, these little tiny forms like this. And you might notice that with none of these forms do I use the deer skin to compress the lip. It's because when you use these tools and you bring it up at the top of that pull, you apply that tool against your finger and you've compressed the lip. There, is, there doesn't need to be that extra step of using the chamois or the deer skin, whatever it's called, to compress the lip. And that's essentially finished. There'll be a tiny bit of trimming done once it's a little bit more firm. But that's pretty much done. See how much that moves around. Just handling it after throwing that stuff has got no backbone at all. So I kick with my right leg when I'm trying to center the clay or, or bringing it into a smaller diameter coloring it in but once it's once it's this small diameter and doesn't require it doesn't require that kicking quite as much and I can just do an occasional pull with my left leg a little slow tread towards me with the left leg and that keeps the wheel spinning as much as I need it to spin Again, you can see here the wheel head's real clean. And even at the end of the video, the wheel head will still be clean because I'm not using water for throwing here. I'm using the slip, which actually, for me, lubricates better than water and it makes much less of a mess. Oop, got a little hiccup there. But that, <laughs> it's just an opportunity. That's a good place uh, to make the front for that cup later. When I trim it, I'll think I'll trim it with that as the front in mind, and then when I fire it in the kiln, that will be faced toward the front. It makes a nice little focal point. My goal here is to throw reasonably quick and loose, but not sloppy, if you know what I mean. I think I just wanted a little bit more swell on the belly of that cup there. <laughs> All right, and we're trimming it off. You can see it's not perfectly round. That's great for this form. That's just what I want. And this is the last cup that showed up on video here. And this is another one of those kutsugata, or shoe-shaped bowls.
put a little definition on the outside here. A little place to stop the glaze if it decides to run. I lot when I did that I lost that sort of swell. So I'm going ahead and trying to add that swell back in there with my finger. I like that just sort of really subtle roundness to be there. Right. That's about it. And those are the cups that I threw in this session. Two basic forms there, the, the bowl ones and the shoe-shaped ones. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for joining me today.